Okay, so we're going to have a look at how we play the game Hangman. I'm sure a number of you have played Hangman before. Never really thought about how we would turn this into a computer program, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to think about the uh, the logic uh, of how we play Hangman, and then we're going to try and decompose the game into its main blocks uh, to think about the logic of how it flows. So, if you remember how you play Hangman, well, initially you need to come up with a word. Now, obviously, we don't normally uh, tell the word to you uh, because the whole point is you've got to guess the word. But in this case, so we can illustrate the point, uh, I'm going to tell you the word. So I'm going to, in my head, I'm going to have come up with the word carpet. So I would say, OK, I have thought of a word. Um, and the clue that I give you about the word is I give you little dashes that you have to fill in and guess what letters go in there. So I would say to you now, um, have a guess, see if you can guess what my word is. Your only clue at the moment is it's one, two, three, four, five, six letters long, and you no, have no other clues. So you might uh, randomly choose a letter. So you might say, I think there is a B in there. And I will look at my word carpet and I will go, is that a B? Is that a B? Is that a B? No. So I will now say to you, no, I'm afraid there's not a B in carpet. And I will tell you that you have used. So I might help you out. I might give you a list of used letters you've, that you've used to be, and you've also lost, lost one life. So maybe if I was starting with eight lives, I might now say you've got seven lives. And in Hangman, we'd probably draw the little base of the Hangman. You then would maybe have a go at another letter. So you might think, oh, hang on, there's always vowels in uh, in words in English. So Maybe there's a, a vowel in there. What are my vowels? A, E, I, O, U. Let me guess one of those. So I'm going to guess an A. So I go along. You, you said an A. And I go, is the first one an A? No, is the second one an A? Ah, so I say the second letter is an A. So I go over to the guess that you're making. And I go, the first letter, the second letter. I know that that's an A. And I tell you it's an A. You've now used the letter A as well. So I should make that very clear in A. Uh, and there's no more lives lost. So you then think, OK, is there a, um, make another guess, an L in there. So I think with your L and I check it against each letter in the word and there's no L in there. So I say, yep, yeah, you've used the letter L now. Your guesses have gone down to six. And next part of the hangman. You then think, oh gosh, um, OK, so maybe there is another vowel somewhere in here. So what were the A, uh, E? So I'm going to guess an E. I go through my word again. Is it the first, the second, the third, the fourth? Oh, it's the fifth letter. It's an E. So I go along to my word. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth letter is an E. And you've now used up an E. And so on. And we play the game. You keep guessing letters. Um, so obviously if you guessed a C next, I'd find that the C was in position 1, I'd put that in for you, and you'd have used a C. Uh, then you guess an, um, an M, and M is nowhere in there, so now your guess is going down to 5, and we get the next part of the hangman. Uh, you then guess an N, and N is not in there, so that's in the list, and you get the next part of the hangman, and we go to 4. Um, you then guess a T, and I go, oh, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, oh, the sixth letter is a T. And I put T in the list, we don't lose a life. Uh, car et, car carrot, so maybe an R, so you guess an R, um, C A R, C A R, so R is in there. And we don't lose a life. Um, car. Carnet, carnet, car op, p, carpet. So you guess a p. You say a p is in there. You don't lose a life. But now, carpet. Your guess is the same as my initial word. These two are the same. Therefore, we end our game. 
And that's kind of just playing hangman as you would, but thinking about it from a kind of a logical point of view, thinking about what we need to do to actually play the game and think about some of the logic that's going on with the game as we're playing it. So the next part we need to look at is how we then would actually turn that um, into a series of ideas and decompose those into a set of sub ideas which helps us understand the logical flow of how the program works and therefore ultimately in our case how we might code it. Okay so let's think about the logic of playing this game. We've just been through how we actually played it. Let's try and decompose this down into the basic steps that make up playing the game. So thinking where we started, what did we do? The first thing we did is um, we get the word that we actually want. So we get the word and I imagine my word is plan in this particular case. The next thing we did when we played the game is we drew some marks to show that it was a four letter word. So this is uh, the guess that the user is having. At the moment it's blank and as they guess letters we fill this in with the various letters that they're guessing. So we can say uh, show the guess. Well, that seems to be quite a self-contained block. That's pretty straightforward. If you think what happened next is we said to the user, OK, please guess a letter. So our next thing is going to be guess letter. Again, that's a pretty straightforward block. So they guessed a particular letter. And let's say they guessed an A. What we then did is we looked to see if the A was in our word. And that has two possible outcomes. The A is in the word or maybe the A is not in the word. So our next bit really is to ask the question, is the letter in the word? And it has two possible outcomes. Yes, the letter is in the word, and no, it's not in the word. So if the letter was in the word, what did we do? So we imagine they guessed an A, we said A was in plan, and we, we figured out that the letter was in the word by going along looking one letter at a time. Is it a P, is it, a, is it there? Oh, it's the third letter. Knowing it was the third letter, we placed the letter in their guess. So we put the A in their guess. That's what we need to do down here. So if the answer is there, place letter in the guess. Pretty straightforward. And if the answer was no, what do we do if the answer was no? So imagine they'd um, put an M in there. We'd go, no, it's not in there. All we did is we reduce, reduce lives by one. So our lives counter, which was eight, now went down to seven. So reduce lives by one. Which reminds me up here now, as well as getting the word, I needed to um, set lives Set lives equal to uh, eight as my starting point. And then remember what we did next. It didn't matter whether the letter was in the word or whether the letter wasn't in the word. We then were compiling a list of used letters, uh, A, um, etc. So we need to do that. So we need to add letter to used list. And those come back together there because it doesn't matter which way we went round, we, we did that. Having done that, what was our next thing? Well, we needed to know was the user allowed to have another go? And obviously we were looking to see if the word had been completed. 
Now we can tell if the word's completed if their guess is the same as our initial word. But if their guess is the same as the initial word, they, they've got all the letters. So that's one thing we can ask to say, uh, kind of ask the question. So is the guess equal to the word? And the other thing we check is just to look at the number of lives, because obviously if the lives gets to zero, then the user's finished anyway. So is the guess equal to the word, or is lives equal to zero? So we've got um, two kind of checks going on in there. When we get to the end, if the guess the word, or the lives is zero, so if the answer to that is true, they guess the words, we obviously end our program and we, uh, should be the other way around really, but we get the idea, and we print results. So I'm going to put that as one big block, obviously it's technically probably the other way around. And if the answer to that is no, then what would we do? Well. They haven't guessed the word, and there are still lives. Obviously, they get to have another go, so we show them the guess, and they guess another letter. So there's the basic decomposition of the idea of Hangman. All the key parts are in there. We've broken down, and we've got um, an algorithm now to play with. And if we gave this algorithm to somebody on paper, and explained it to them, they could follow this algorithm and they could play the game of Hangman effectively. What we clearly want to do now is we want to turn this into code. So we take our algorithm as we've written it, written it down here and we think about how we would turn that into actual code. And we'll talk about that in the next little bit. Okay, so from the coding point of view, it's not that far off really. We've got our main functions in here, so we've got to um, get the user to guess a letter, we've got to find out if the letter's in the word, we've got to add a letter to list, uh, we can see reduce lives by one, so these are all straightforward things to resolve probably in functions. The bit that's not quite right from a software point of view is the way that we're looping back here. Now we've decided we want to code this in Python, we know that within Python, the way to do a loop like this, where we don't know how many times we're going to go around it, is to use a while loop. And we know the construct for a while loop is to have the while at the top here and have the condition at the top. And then we repeat uh, underneath the condition, get to the end, and go back up to the top and reevaluate. So it would seem really that all that's wrong with our kind of loop here is that this um, test here really needs to go back up to the top of the list uh, but we just need to think about that because we, we don't know whether we're going to have all these variables at the top of the list so that's the next little bit we need to do just think about how we can take these conditions which are the right conditions but try and apply them at the beginning of the list Okay, so let's think about this from the hangman perspective then, um, and actually coding it now in Python. Well, obviously when we think about these blocks in Python, we're still going to have to start with uh, getting the word, and we're still going to have to start with setting lives to uh, 8, because that's where our code starts. Now we know in Python that to do our loop around this, we're going to have to code a while loop because that's the construction that we have in Python. Within Python how does the while loop work? Well we need to put a statement here that when it evaluates to true it sends us round the loop and back to the top again. So that's how we want to code our Python. A true statement in here sends us round the loop. If you look back to what we've just coded when we thought about our algorithm, at the end we actually coded a condition to escape out of the loop. It evaluated to true when, the, when they guessed the word or the lives were zero. So either of those conditions, we exited the loop. 
now we're having to come at it about thinking about why we want to stay in the loop. Well, obviously, we want to stay in the loop while the user has not got the guess. So, obviously, while our guess does not equal the word, and so while that's true, that means the guess is not the word, we will go around our loop. The other condition that we need to think about is what about lives? Well, while the lives are not zero, while they are not zero, that's another reason to go around the loop. The only thing to do is to think about the combination of these. Do we need to combine them with an and or an or to stay in the loop? If you think about it, to stay in the loop, you want the word not to have been guessed and that there's still lives left. So it's pretty obvious it must be an and. Now, some people find that logic quite difficult to kind of comprehend. Sometimes you need to think about it. How would you exit the loop? Well, you'd exit the loop when they guessed the word or the lives were zero, which is how we coded it before. But because we're looking when the guess is not the word and the lives are not zero, we combine them with an and now. Because if we need both of these to be true to stay in the loop. If this becomes a, <coughs> a false, because they guess the word, we exit. Or if this became a false, we'd guess the word. Uh, so we've run out of lives, so we exit. So we need both of these to be true to stay inside the loop. OK, what then goes on inside our loop? Well, just like we had before, we need to show the guess. So that's a block that goes within our loop. We need to get the user to guess the letter. We need to then ask the question, is the letter in the word? And if the answer to that is a yes, then we need to put the letter in the word, or put the letter in the guess, sorry. And if it's a no, then we need to reduce lives by one. So lives equals lives minus one. No matter which way we came at it, we want to add the letter to the use letters. And the great thing about it now is, that's it, we've finished and we've added the letters to the use and now we loop back around up to the while. Because we'll go up to the top and it will now check for us to see if we have guessed the word or there are no lives. If we haven't guessed the word and there are still lives, we'll go back around the loop. If either of those conditions are false, what do we do? Well, we fall out of the loop and we're on to the next bit of code, which will print the results and obviously end our game. OK, so that's giving you the coding then for the actual Python function. And it's this then that we start decomposing into blocks. And what we're going to start by looking at is looking at seeing if we can write this function in the middle to figure out if a letter is actually in the word. And we're going to use this to help our understanding of strings. Okay, 